our Committee of the Whole Meeting of September 12, 2022, for the Board of the Park District Commissioners of the Lakewood Park District. Can I have a roll call for Ms. Marshall? My name is Constance McCabe. I live at 12853 West Sanctuary Lane in Lake Bluff. At the last meeting I attended in person, you set an arbitrary December 1 deadline for signing a contract with stormwater management. I understand that you claim they are difficult to deal with, but I find that this lacks credibility since Highland Park very successfully dealt with them over the last four years in the creation of their preserve and Libertyville is on its third project with stormwater management. So I find the claims that they are difficult and unresponsive to be not credible. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please? Uh, there is no one else. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. With that, I'm going to close the statement of visitors here tonight. Um, moving on, uh, the residence report. In previous discussions, um, 
with the board in different meetings. We talked about addressing the results of the forest with regard to financials with the park district and with regard to how this is going to affect um, the assets that we have within the park district. This is a constantly evolving, constantly um, changing uh, in terms of how this has been proceeding. And so I am only saying because of the agenda that we have for tonight with discussing stormwater management under the business, um, that in terms of how we're going to discuss those things will change. We will talk about financials uh, a bit tonight, especially about the plan, but talk about more of the financials at a later time. Um, I am going to say as well that uh, Sacoma, our council is going to be referring to some correspondence. Uh, I will say that when anyone on this board communicates, uh, we follow the open feedback. When we write something, we always realize that it's subject to FOIA. So everything is written in the thought that it could be discussed or it should be discussed at some later date. Uh, some of the correspondence that is there um, references internal correspondence, um, which is unusual to say the least, but we will be discussing that tonight. One of the things that our council will also talk about are several statutes, codes, uh, that refer to what happens with um, public, excuse me, with governmental funding. So in going into that, we'll go into our new business. And the first on our agenda is uh, discussions. Oh, let me back up again just a little bit. In keeping with what we've done before, we will, this is not an evening where we're going to be voting. We're going to be having a discussion and as part of the board. However, we will invite to public comment. This will be that we will listen to. We won't be engaging in answering questions or any sort of debate back and forth. Again, everyone will get the same three minute time to be able to discuss information, but uh, we'll invite that at the end of each one of our topics for this evening. So going on from there, we are going to have the discussion regarding the decision of the Lake County Stormwater Management Commission to move forward the site other than the Lake Love Golf Course for stormwater flood storage. In hosting the meetings that we have so far, and we have 35 meetings where in one way, shape, or form, stormwater management has been a topic. We've had so many other things that have been happening with the park district in terms of the pool, in terms of the beach, in terms of getting ready for preschool. But this has been an overriding and pervasive topic that obviously has had a lot of community engagement. In listening to the community members as they've been speaking on this topic, with each one of our meetings, with each one of the public forums that we've been hosting. I'll use the word expectations. There have been a lot of expectations of different people as to their memories with the golf course, what they want to see in the future, or their thoughts as to giving preserves, wetlands, walking trails. A lot of different expectations that can also be called wants. Is it me stuff? Okay. Our role is the board. It's what we were elected to do, is to be the fiscal stewards of the park district. We have to balance what we hear from the community as to what they want and how it fits in with what we have as the park district. How does that fit in financially and how does that fit in with the entire asset base that we have here in the Park District. And I'll remind everybody, because we seem to forget, we have the ravine, we do have wetlands, we have so many parks, we have so many entities, so many other assets. And 
So this discussion about the golf course and converting that to wetlands, um, everything else seems to take a, a back role. But in the background, we have been continued to be the fiduciary and be responsible for managing and for looking for the finances of those assets. This proposal for stormwater management on a local golf course, I'm going to say primarily came about because of funding, because of the money that could potentially be involved. I'll say really quickly because I don't want to discount anything. There were a number of other things that came with this. So many people have talked about in the, the environment, the golf course, and the fertilizer, and what you would do with other land with the golf course in terms of walking trails and fishing and so forth. There were so many other things, but I want to distill it down to the aspect of funding. Because when this was proposed, to look for 40 acre feet of stormwater storage. SMC was very clear that it did not have to be wetlands, that this could be stored in some other way. It simply was that wetlands could potentially be sold for credits and potentially that money would come back to the park district because the funding came from a governmental source. So when Chair Hart made the presentation to the Sustainability Committee meeting in the village so many months ago, and a number was voted out there for converting the stormwater into those wetlands, selling those wetlands, that became an overriding figure that everybody was looking at. So again, I'm not discounting all the other things that have been tied into this, but that really was an overarching emphasis of what's going on here. The task force was extremely important to us because they did the research to look at how this would happen. How do you convert a golf course into wetlands? What's necessary to do this? What are the plantings? What is the timing? But one of the most important things that the task force brought forward to us is what are the risks? What are the benefits? And what are the realistic, to, to their research, what are the realistic expectations that you could have for the financial benefit for doing something like this? And so we took that information, and, and you really need to look at what they put forward in terms of the finances of this kind of land use conversion. Right before the task force published their report, it was brought that federal funds couldn't be used to develop weapons which would then be sold and we would receive the money, the profit, the income from that. So, people know me, talk about my hands, and continue to do that. That is an important piece of information because there are two sources of funds. One would be from the federal government, the other one would be from the state. That would be SMC's funding to be able to create the wetlands which would be here at the Park District, which would thereafter be sold. So getting this information to know that you can't use federal funds to create wetlands which would then be sold is very important because that cuts off that one avenue. The second avenue then is state funding. And can that be done through state funds? Can you use state funds that create wetlands which would then be sold? And that's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight. There are, I referenced the correspondence, there are a number of codes and statutes that have been referenced. And I think at this point I'm going to turn it over to Scott Puma, who's going to talk about um, what we have for information at this time regarding the funding sources. Okay. So the question we've been trying to answer is whether we can sell wetland credits if the area is constructed with either federal or state money. 
and, and so originally we had the opinion from the Army Corps that we couldn't use federal money to, to do that. So we were looking at the state funding. And, and when we look at the state enabling statute relative to wetlands, that's it's just that it's an enabling statute. It doesn't provide any actual regulations. The administrative code was supposed to um, bolster it relative to the regulations, but it really doesn't provide any more information. The state grant application actually defines profit in the grant application itself. And it, says, and it also says that profits are not permitted, and that also references um, the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act and the Code of Federal Regulations, um, which is an administrative, the rulemaking part of the federal government, the administrative agencies of the federal government make rules and are published in what's called the Code of Federal Regulations. So profit is not permitted under the Illinois grant in the Illinois grant application. So the question is whether it could be permitted. I reached out to the governor's office of management and budget, and after some delays because they don't answer the phone, um, they did respond and say we can't give you an answer, which wasn't very helpful. So we're back looking at the statutes and the enabling acts and those that prevent the administrative regulations which, which um, um, Okay. So the, the, the regulations um, don't really provide any guidance there. So we have not been able to find any information that actually shows us that you could sell out the credits under the state if you were in the state plan. Um, we, we've asked for the assistance that we could get from SMC and, and Mr. Goldberg has provided correspondence and I think the board has seen it and it perhaps the public. Um, but, but those go back then to the Code of Federal Regulations. And the Code of Federal Regulations applies to Army Corps permits. So the, the code sections relative to the mitigation banks that are permitted by the Army Corps, the Department of the Army is actually what it says. Um, which is not what we are understanding, that is not the information that I think the board had in this case, that it was going to be a federal So those codes, federal regulations, the specific ones, Aren't the same as would apply in the grant um, accountability and transparency act of the moment. So we've been trying to dig down into those to see if there was anything that we could point to to get that a clear answer. And, and the clearest answer goes back to, to the email that was received from the Church Army Corps, who, who said that. Um, Spending funds for the creation of mitigation bank is not permitted. That's that's the best information that we've been given uh, on, on this topic. So at, at this point, um, there is no clear pathway to do this project under either state or federal regulations and information that was provided was that SMC was going to look also for the compensatory because the non-binding letter wasn't um, provided. The um, program is still moving forward, or the mitigation programs are still moving forward, but it doesn't appear that we, we, we have an answer to that question uh, in the affirmative that would give the board the, the comfort that we have been to, to move forward with uh, this project. It's got a uh, couple of questions because you know, a, a lot of information, um, but just a couple of points of clarity. Um, the best information you received said, what again? 
that the investment that the federal government can't use for the litigation to sum up the points. Okay, and if I remember correctly, that was information that was in the task force report. Right. Uh, and that information came from who again? Candy Church at the um, Army Corps. Okay, and to my understanding, this whole project would have to be approved by the Army Corps of Engineers before any, anything really happens in terms of construction. That wasn't my understanding. I thought it was a little bit permanent, but I could be wrong. Okay. It, it, it depends on the source of the funds, but I don't believe that it would be a Army Corps of Engineers or something, but that's what they're switching to the state and some of the different information. I apologize. No, no, no. I'm just not entirely sure of the permitting process. When, if I remember the task force correctly, it seemed that the Army, we would need an Army Corps approval or stormwater would need an Army Corps core approval for um, us, to, us to establish a reputable uh, wetland domain. Does anyone else on the board understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what I'm saying. I thought that was the recommendation of... Uh, yes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that because it's been a while since we really talked about that before. If I could just add, I think that there was an option on that option to see that the Army Corps of Engineers was on use. Just, and then additionally, real quick, Paul, hold on. Thank you. Um, have you read the letter um, on September 8th that was delivered um, for Kurt Wolfer and the Stormwater Commission? Yes. So on um, beginning of page two, he uh, talks about there are no entity can profit from the grand war. There are exceptions to this rule, and the Treasury has released a recent FAQ document, which I provided you on September 1st. The recent FAQ clarifies the Treasury's position and treatment of program income. Um, have you had a chance to review that? I, I did, and, and I didn't receive it on September 1. I didn't, I, I didn't have any communication um, with Mr. Fulton on September 1. Um, so I did look at the FAQ, um, and I, I don't think it says exactly that. It talks about program income that is permitted from using our um, our money is supposed to be used to mitigate COVID, but they've expanded it into small water, small storm, and water more um, utility type issues. So program income, so uh, it is different, I think, than under the profit when we're looking. We're also talking two different things. We're doing ARPA, and we're talking in, in the Code of Federal Regulations, and we use it in that. So, um, that seems to be kind of an open question because we're not getting, we, we don't have a certainty as to how this could have been funded. If it was a tree park grant or if it was something, some other um, source that was administered through DCT, there, there's different levels here in terms. Hey, um, but just to clarify that, the, the program in Incoming talks about that was the original intention of the, pro the program, right? Here. That's not the application that we have. Okay. In, in, until this is the first time that this was raised. Okay.
You say that again? It, it's the bank. It, it's the sale of property as a bank. It, you, you didn't use it, it, it just, you didn't mitigate it with that money. But then to create a bank and then sell that bank, that's where the problem comes in. But if the federal funds are the source of the construction of the wetlands, then whether you use Does, does it matter if, if the money, the federal money is flowed to, to say PCEO and, and that's being put out? It may or may not. It's, it's a bit unclear and that's why I tried to get information from the governor's office and didn't get it. I was told that it wouldn't answer the question. So it, it could also come up in that way. I, I went back to the state grant application that says and from the grant we saw, which is not the grant that would be applicable in our case, but from the grant from the Illinois Department of Commerce, that grant had standard terms. And the standard terms stated you cannot be proper and the federal regulations would govern the grant process of whether federal and or state funds were used. So there were two sections, the 77 and 78. And one said federal regulations would cover any grant, whether the funding was federal and or state. And then 78 said no property could be made. And those were their standard terms.
totally understanding, you know, this part, and this is in the, um, the response from uh, Scott Wilford from SNC. It, it, it states in the Code of Federal, Federal Regulations, it's the, it's the second here, uh, it says, Entities are encouraged to earn income to defray program costs where appropriate. So I took that to mean if you know wetlands are created or, or something you know with federal or state funds, if they're created, then you know the way that income could be earned would be other ways. Like I, I just don't think it was left open to interpretation the way it is on here. It's not saying that you know wetland you know mitigation bank is the way that it's, you know maybe you sell time on your soccer field that's created near the wetlands or you sell passes to get into your wetlands or something like that. But I was just curious what your take was on that one. So, so that actually is, has nothing to do with wetlands. That has to do with uh, the grant process and the income that could be earned. And the, the federal government grants a lot of money um, to different entities, research, you know, universities, new research, um, drug companies, those kind of things to do uh, different research. So that talks about, that's more of a global provision relative to income, and it's not at all specific to uh, wetlands or mitigation or anything like that. So that's just property from the grant itself? That refers to offset income, and it is a different um, definition than, than what we see in the actual grant application itself. Thank you. You know, Nikki, I, I think relative to your point, I think we can look at the logic of the situation. If, if the taxpayers of Illinois fund a wetlands project for Piatone in Illinois, then, and Piatone takes that money and builds a swimming pool, then you've got Illinois taxpayers funding their school, which is not the idea. And, and so the legal position, you know, the idea is to create what? Fine. Use the grant money to create what? But not to create a slave pool for people. I apologize for being confused. Um, so I, I think the legal position really fits in with, with the logical position. We want our taxpayer money going for certain activities, and we don't want them to burn to other activities that have nothing to do with taxpayer needs. So, so Scott, question for you. On the letter from Stormwater Management Commission on September 9th, which we received this afternoon. Um, I would just would like to know your take on the difference in what Mr. Wilford is talking about as far as saying, you know, he states that to be clear, SMC could use grant funds as well as state and local federal funds to excavate, ex excavate stormwater storage with flood plain in advance. And he goes on to talk about basically saying that we can use funds use federal grants, state grants, and so forth. And I'm sure you've had a chance to read this letter, right? So there's a letter from September 8th and September 9th. What are your thoughts on the difference between what were our opinions versus what Mr. Wilford is saying in his letter? Okay, can you just, I just want to confirm where you're at in the letter section. Absolutely. So, so he states what, what he's doing is he's responding to. So that there's an as this continues in the right? Yeah, so I'm just in reading the letter this afternoon at the bottom of page two, where he's saying, where he sort of stated it a couple of times throughout the letter, but specifically there, it says, to be clear, the SNC can use grant funds as well as local state and federal funds to exhibit stormwater, storage of the floodplain, conveyance, etc. The point is, throughout the September 9th letter, he seems to have a different viewpoint than what we're taking. So what are your thoughts okay. on what you believe to be the difference between what uh, Mr. Wolford is saying in, in his letter versus what our different opinion is? Okay. I, I see that. So, the, the 
whereby can we consistently be used to create the, the stormwater storage of your areas? And I, I don't think anybody here disputes that. I don't think that's ever been a dispute. But the, the question that we're still left with is whether we can create a mitigation bank and then sell credits um, there. And, and uh, there isn't any specific information that says that we can do that. It's, it's not in any, any of this correspondence um, that with, with citations to either statutes or to the from the federal government or from the governor's office and then the budget that, that we could do this. And I think that's what we've been trying to get down to um, to, to get that answer and it hasn't been working. Thank you. Um, if, if we stay in that paragraph, the last sentence says, it says, depending on the specifics, if you're working with SEC and how the Board of Engineers, the wetland, wetland mitigation bank may be established. It, it's certainly possible that you could have a mitigation bank, and the question comes is, how do you solve the crimes? And, and uh, I guess it could be presumed that you, you can solve crimes, but again, we're, we're missing the information that gives us the, the legal basis for that or an opinion from somebody that we can, we can do that. And we can have that email and correspondence going way back for us and we can't do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Why did you give a non-binding letter of intent when 
who didn't know what the application was for. It's imperative that we do that. I'll turn this over now. Go ahead, please. I think I we can. No, we can because I'm sure there will be things and again we're not going to answer questions. We will listen, um, but it's not a vote tonight, so we're going to be Certainly, certainly. Let's listen to the public voice for that. We'll do that. Thank you. So we'll turn this over first to the people who are here uh, tonight. Um, if there's anyone who would like to make a statement, again, um, as we've had before, it will be three minutes in length, and I do ask that it be kept to the topic that we have here, and nothing will be referenced to anyone or any uh, person specifically. Thank you. Storage on the golf course property. 
<clears throat> this is a very important project among many other regional projects that we are working on throughout the county, close to 60 other projects. The wording of your agenda appears to misrepresent SNC's decisions or mislead the public regarding our multi phase project that began in 2014. Since January of 2021, SNC has been coordinating with the Park District to locate this storage area, including options on the Navy base, upstream, on the golf course itself. Park District does have an open invitation to participate in our monthly working group meetings. After 18 months, SNC has not received the decision from the Park District regarding stormwater storage on the golf course property. As reported by the task force earlier this year, SNC cannot finalize our h &E study until the Park District makes a decision on the stormwater storage. It was also reported that due to this uncertainty, SNC did proceed and we are proceeding with a design to include a restrictor plate. So the restrictor plate will control the flows until the storage is provided. Recently, I was on a call with the Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee and was informed that our $10 million FEMA grant application is about to expire. And it's use it or lose it, the funding will be gone. Since the Park District did not provide the requested non-binding letter of intent, SNC removed the storage option from the golf course property for the FEMA grant. However, our project still requires stormwater storage in order for that restricted plate to be removed. Additional local, state, and federal monies are available, including a recent $2.75 million earmark that was recently approved by SEC for this project. To address Commissioner Lane's water quality concerns with inviting cigarette butts, animal feces, Use needles and pumping 40 acres of garbage into your community for a quick payoff. I believe the Park District will be pleased with our FEMA grant scope, which was modified to include the conversion of approximately 7,000 linear feet of the Skokie River to a two stage channel with floodplain benches that you can see on the exhibit. This design not only creates much needed flood storage volume within the river. But the two-stage channel also provides numerous environmental benefits as well. The design also increases the interaction time between the floodwaters and the native vegetation planting within the benches, which Thank increases you know. pollutant Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tommy Schmidt. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Donnie Schmidt. I'm the chairman of Stormwater Management. 
uh, f former president of Lake County Municipal League and the current mayor of Fox Lake. I found that it's essential that governments work together as partners to address the challenges facing our region. Prior to my presidency of the league, the Municipal League operated separately from the county and the townships. I formed partnerships with the townships and the county for the betterment of our region. But together we accomplished much more than we ever could have separately. It's my goal to do the same thing as chairman of SMC. Working together with municipalities, townships, homeowner associations, park districts, and all other entities, we can and have benefited the entire region. Because of the impact of flooding in your region, doing nothing is not an option. Too many people are affected by the flooding. SMC has not taken action to exclude the Lake Bluff Golf Course from the, our Stokey River Regional Floodplain Enhancement Project. But because we have not received a clear understanding of your intentions, we have developed two courses of action, one including the golf course and the other without the golf course. As Kurt said Thursday night, we approved $2.75 in funding, for, uh, which may be available for compensatory storage on the Lake Bluff golf course. We understand this is a sensitive decision for your board, and we have awaited the decision for 18 months. If you don't want to partner with SMC, we understand. We just request that you make a decision soon as this project needs to move forward. Too many people are affected. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Oh, I'm sorry. There is one other person who doesn't have to do Please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cheryl Hunter. And I have two questions. One is, is it possible to see the other side of the board that is actually presented? Can you turn it around? Yes, thank you. And, and the other one is, uh, my understanding is what I'm hearing from you is there no specific statute that approves some of the wetland credits. Is that am I understanding that correctly? There's no specific statute that says we can do that. But we'll listen. Okay, well, that's a question. Uh, that's my understanding from what I'm hearing here. So my other question is, is there some specific statute that says we can't? Is there some prohibition against that? And have we heard that? And somehow not Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Over 18 months. 
phases was never discussed. And there has been reasonable steps. Um, as you know, we've created a timeline that has all the dates with meetings, emails, with SMC, with Lakeland Park District, discussing, but never a phase was included in this. So I'm just trying to understand this whole phase. Thank you.
And they met at three public meetings in this gymnasium with large numbers of the public and challenged the public to raise $75,000 in order to keep the golf course open. And the community responded by raising $130,000 in just a few months. And that was four years ago. This is not something that can be done without thinking of those community needs and thinking of the community at large. This proposal was never that problem. We do not know whether SMC knew from the start that federal and state law prohibited the sale of what credits when grants were used to build them. If they didn't know, I think they should have known because that's essential to this project. And if they did know and didn't tell us, then that's even worse because then they were trying to mislead us into doing this one. We have done our due diligence on this. We have been working hard on this. The board has continued to work. The task force that has done. The board has continued to do its work. Our due diligence on this one. It was the board who came up with the legal information that federal law prohibited this type of operation. So I think one of the things we have to look at, you know, and, and in, in the September 9 letter that's been referenced a couple of times, Kurt Wolford wrote that there seems to be support on the Lake Bluff Park District Board to continue working with SMC on this project. I'm not sure at all where he got that information from or where he assumes that there's support on this board. But I think we need to look at whether indeed we want to continue with SMC on this one. And whether we believe that there's a partner there that we could work with and with whom we can depend upon. Or whether we should just ask SMC, we're constantly told this is voluntary, we say no, and, 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 and they move on and we move on. As the best move forward for this board. Okay. Can you stop um, for bringing us up to date on this and um, really just to bring this into a circle? Um, I can hear people saying, I've heard people say, you know, what is the bottom of this? And is it talking around each other? Um, SMC has a goal that they have set for themselves to accomplish. It is, so to speak, third party, their service, their methods. They have the contacts that I got at the naval base in North Chicago. If there is something that's still there that they need to talk to the park district about, there has been several attempts to reach out to say, park district can be part of this conversation. Um, it will be the directors, it will be the superintendents, but if that's where they would like to go, that's where they would like to go. To look at it as we have been tonight, in terms of a payoff, a funding opportunity, with the way that this was initially presented, again, why reaching back to what the task force had and with the presentations that were there, um, with hearing from different mitigation bankers, that's where they make their money. When a private individual, when a private banker uses land and they put forth all that risk and they put forth their money to sell those credits, they get the high percentage payout.
the landowner does not get as much. That's what we heard from our partners at our city. So another township over with Libertyville Township, that's what we've heard from the mitigation members. This was a very novel approach to use government funding. That would be the main goal, to use the park district land. So, and again, in summary, there's been nothing that's been presented to us and from the research that we have, it is not proper for us to use federal funds, state funds, to bankroll the creation of wetlands, which could then be sold for credit to create funding for the park district. Okay. Moving on from here. Um, our next item on the agenda. I think I've been shuffling some of the papers. It is the North Shore Water Reclamation Basin Project. With an update. Thank you, John. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll do a, uh, a brief update uh, for you. Not a, not a lot of new information. We did have a uh, presentation at the ADR meeting last week. At the village board meeting this evening, uh, so that's why we sent uh, Noah, our park superintendent, to the village board meeting to uh, uh, be there to answer the questions. If something comes up with any park district, uh, there was a few changes in uh, the plan. Most of the things are uh, cosmetic, uh, seem to do with building, with the landscaping, um, adding some canopies of the restrooms. Beneficial for uh, our, our residents that are using those facilities. Um, a few questions we're still trying to clear up with them when the, when the bathrooms uh, heated so that they can be used year round, so that we want to bring the uh, porta potties back in. Also, uh, just a few other requests, such as those two. And uh, I think the big one for us that we still haven't received uh, the final information whether the new structure, the basin itself, is going to um, withhold the weight of a sand delivery truck. Um, we have sand delivery done each year. Um, and so that's something that they were they were looking into and we are not really heard the fine lines on that. That's going to be more part of our operation, obviously, down there. So um, otherwise, uh, most of the project, the, 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 the updated plans were in the uh, package. Uh, they're on, online as well. And, um, and to most of the other you know, things that we were you know, hoping to get on this project are, are included at this point and you know, should be beneficial for us. Uh, that's really all that I have for the update. If there's uh, any, any questions, last thing, and they are still hoping to get this out to bid and, and begin the project at this fall. So they are uh, working on that. It's going to be a pretty tight timeline, but hopefully that is by the village and able to get it out to bid. Did they make a determination of time on the motorized and the backwards? On the motorized? The adding the heat? Yeah, adding the heat. No, that's the final answer on that. Okay. Okay. So, Getting the project started so that the work could be completed and we only lose one season of the beach, as opposed to, you know, at what point do you say you're going to delay the year so that you hold that loss down for one year? There, there was some uh, discussion about, about that uh, with North Shore uh, representatives, and it, it looks like it's still, um, if it were to be started in the fall, late fall, or late winter, we're looking at about an 18-month project, and so we would certainly lose the season of 2023. And by the they would expect to be done by uh, Memorial Day, substantially finished by Memorial Day of 2024. So it would not affect that season. There might still be some landscaping, as they said, and some other.
other things to finish up, but we'd be able to reopen the southeast and the shelter and all of that. So. And they offer no guarantee? <laughs> Uh, no, no guarantee, you know, due to weather, COVID materials, and everything else. You know, there's a lot of variables, but uh, that's, that's the plan we're still working on. Good. This is an exciting project, and it looks like everyone is. Uh, coordinating well between the young uh, between the park district and the village and um, the programs that we have as well as with the um, forest. So there's a lot of cooperative effort going on to try to get this really to be as um, the least disruptive as possible. And I'll look at it, so this is even like this. So, good. All right, and then the last item on our agenda this morning is to talk about um, Capital yeah, funding. And uh, capital funding, excuse me. Uh, yes, so I know that uh, obviously that's an important part of this uh, whole uh, discussion that's going on. And so we wanted to, uh, in it, I guess, discuss a couple of things. One, one is the uh, So this is something that's been reviewed um, with our, uh, both the staff and our, our finance committee. Um, and it covers a lot of different uh, needs from just every uh, park, playground, golf course, paddle, all the facilities you need. Um, and so one of the things that we're talking about with that list is um, obviously funding of, you know, funding sources, right, identify different funding sources to potentially help cover the cost of some of these. Um, it's been a couple of things that we've done in the past year. Uh, we've applied for a FEMA grant to help with the uh, erosion uh, project out of the beach. We applied for last year before we're in the now receive it to we're in the uh, process of applying for that again this year. The total in the grant that we're asking for is about uh, three point eight million dollars. That's a uh, thirty percent matching grant. Um, we've also applied for an ITNR uh, postal uh, resilient grant that uh, we applied for uh, just recently uh, and. That's only about 150, or the total is 150,000 dollars. So that's a that's a smaller grant, but um, again, every, uh, everything you know, So that's that's a different grant that we've applied for. Others that we're looking at with some of our projects, uh, such as the pool or playground, some of the things that are on the tenure are uh, through ID and our common grants. It's the Oslo grants. Um, the participants can see that in the past. Uh, I think in 2015 or 16, you received a Nasdaq grant, um, and that's a pretty, uh, pretty popular kind of grant that's used. There's also another one for IDNR called the PARC, P-A-R-C grant, um, and that's one that uh, Park District did apply for in 2019 and now received. Part of that uh, project is going to be improvements to the pool. So I think that that's something that we can Again, reapply for. I know it's some, especially with some of these IDNR grants, uh, it seems like when you uh, apply for them, if you've not received them, you come back and apply again, they can actually help you get a few more points the next time you uh, come back and apply. So we're um, working on that. I think it's going to be, we're just beginning the budget uh, process here uh, in, in September, and we have, uh, we'll have a finance meeting coming up. I think we'll again want to review that capital list and um, then needs to you know, come back to the full board and then uh, I think review you know, a lot of those items that are on, on that list and decide you know, what, 
um, either for a blended job or we look at you know, someone who can look for grants, do marketing, promotion, etc. Um, whether a grant writer is someone we should have. Given the current environment, is that something that we should be considering? It's something that we can certainly take a look at. Actually, having we'll start to get more involved with some of the you know aspects of both grant writing and or researching these grants. So I think that would be helpful as we get able to spend some more time. As we talked about the last meeting, we have um, we also have uh, an intern that's doing some assistance with grant writing and you know a little bit more um, less involved grants that are not quite as technical. But um, yeah, we, I knew that the part of the has to hire someone in the contract uh, to, to help with some of the grant writing and apparently that was not very successful at the time. Um, it is difficult. It's you know unfortunately we're not a community that's worked very high for needs. Okay, I, I guess it, it is something we can continue to look at, especially if we're just getting involved in that. Um, but I, it's not easy to know. I mean, it's getting grants these days is, is more and more difficult. But, although, in a sense, there's a lot of money slung around with the you know, various federal laws and so So. And the village has discussed as well if there's any way that we could get it kind of synergy. If there's anything that the village and the Park District can't look at together, that would also where it may be, but see if there's any opportunity to do that. Well, I think you know my position on that, Jennifer. But I, the, the danger of when you share resources with another organization is which organ, which, you know, which is going to be the squeaky wheel that gets all the way. And, and we don't want to be in a position where we're told that our grant takes second fiddle to their grant, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not accusing anyone, um, but I think that's something that, that we have to take into consideration when, when we look at something like that. It sounds good. But in practice, it might be a little bit difficult to uh, to make it work properly. We'll see if the opportunity arises. Okay, so um, to continue on with this, because we do have um, business to conduct as well as this capital needs to uh, address with the pool, with the beach, with other aspects of the park district, we will um, come back and revisit this. Um, as well as that we do the business action job, we do need to put together our strategic plan. With that, uh, I, I would just note that assuming we get our extension signed with golf visions, uh, the eight hundred thousand dollars in capital expenses for golf course more or less go away. I mean we're not guaranteed of anything um, immediately, but much if not all of that uh, will no longer exist. Thank you everyone for this evening.